Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Norbert Birch, and I am an internet red hat uh, since since last year. Uh, and please welcome uh, Daiki Uano too. Yeah, so I'm Daiki. Uh, I'm just a PR of Kim. So it's uh, his project. So please welcome. <laughs> So today I'm going to talk about Fido, what it is, what is it uh, good for, uh, what problems does it solve, a little bit about a little bit about the passwordless authentication, and afterwards uh, the, about our project, uh, what problems we are trying to solve, and in what way. Uh, so Fido is. Fido is uh, an alliance. Uh, with like 200 members, uh, there are companies like like Google, uh, PayPal, and such on. They are trying to bring more secure, so stronger authentication uh, to the online. Uh, we are talking here about uh, two-factor authorization, which means uh, when the user is authenticating uh, into a service. Uh, he needs something he know. That means like a password, a pin, or something, and something he has. This can be a token, some hardware. Uh, when we are talking about multi-factor authentication, then it's the, the same too as at the two-factor authorization, something you have, something you know, and something you are, which are mostly biometrics, like fingerprint, uh, retina scan, or a face scan. And uh, later on, I will talk about the passwordless authentication. So when we are authenticating to a, to a service, for example, we want to log in into our Facebook account or Google account or something, we mostly have to use a username and the password. Uh, the password has to be something long and something which makes it strong, like using multiple characters. And uh, it should be random. But does it actually mean that it's unbreakable? Uh, well, not. Uh, to enhance like strength of the security, uh, Fido tries to uh, to make it possible with with a second factor, multi factor. So, why is it good for for the server admins? Um, when someone logs into a, a service a site, that it, his uh, data is saved to the database. So there is a username and a hashed password. But if the database got leaks, uh, it's it's hard to prevent like any breaks into the account. But if you use multi-factor authentication, there is, uh, there is not possible to break into the account even they got the password from the hash because they still need something, uh, something hardware, something you you is it's in your belongings. So how does it work? It uses public key cryptography, and uh, let me talk about it uh, with an example. So Fida two works with two operations: the make credential, which is used to sign into a service. Uh, I, I will use the word relying party, which means like the other end, uh, which can be like Google, Facebook or something. So signing into the relying party and get a session which is used to log in to this service. Uh, when we are signing in, we provide a username and password as regular, but after then the, the service asks the authenticator to make a credential. Uh, that means the authenticator device uh, creates a public key and the private key pair, then sends out the public key to the relying party. Uh, 
uh, when we are trying to log in, the relying party asks for the username, the password, and after this, uh, he sends out uh, a challenge. This challenge uh, can be any data which the authenticator should sign with the key it, it has. Uh, for, uh, so this is how actually the, the authenticator authenticates its uh, your key. Uh, the FIDUS2 standard comes with um, with two protocols. Uh, the first one is WebAuthn, uh, which is uh, used for communication between the application, so the client and the relying party. Uh, it mostly is used with JavaScript and, and the REST API. API. Uh, the second one is CTAP. It's client to authenticate them protocol, which is a low level transport protocol, which communicates with the authenticator. Um, so let's mention here the user verification. Uh, that means that the authentic authenticator verifies if the person uses the key is actually the person who, who it belongs to. The verification can happen with a PIN, a password, or, or biometrics. So now let's talk about a bit about passwordless authentication because uh, beforehand, I was talking about the two-factor and multi-factor authentication. Now let's move a bit about the passwordless. Uh, the the benefits of the passwordless authentication is that that the authenticating data, so the verification data, remains at the client side. Uh, passwordless authentication doesn't really mean it it don't use passwords. It means that the password uh, doesn't get sent out to the relying party through the internet. So as you can see at the diagram, you just uh, pick your username and the relying party uh, ask for the challenge. So there is actually, uh, so there is the password at the client side here when the person authenticates with the authenticator. Uh, this process requires user presence to which means mostly pushing a button at the authenticator, which like cannot be hacked because it's coded hardware. Um, the passwordless authentication for now is not possible because the authenticator device is like a USB token has no uh, hardware support for that. So for now, there is no authenticator with a uh, fingerprint reader, for example, on the market. Uh, so let's move to the problems. Uh, Fido is working good. There is a problem we are trying to solve, which is that the client who tries to communicate with the authenticator needs full uh, access to the device. Uh, a second one is that, the, that I was talking about later, User verification is not capable. We have no capable devices for user verification. Uh, how does it look like? Uh, let's say we are we want to use a sandbox, for example, a flat pack, uh, and want to log in uh, with, for example, Firefox into into some service on the internet with two-factor authentication. The problem is that the flat pack is running uh, not actually at the, like the sandbox cannot access the hardware of the host without permission. So if you want to authenticate ourselves with a, with, uh, with a Mozilla in a flat pack, uh, we, we need to allow the flat pack the permission of uh, of working with with uh, USB, uh, and this is not what we want to because uh, it can cause like security problems. Uh, so our approach to solve this problem is 
to create a user service on the host uh, and and to solve the second problem that there are no uh, capable user dev uh, authenticated devices on the market to enable virtual passwordless authentication with TPM. So the implementation comes uh, with Dbus. Uh, it means the service is running uh, at Dbus. Uh, it's waiting for for the for the challenges or just operations to come in and uh, it can be actually activated uh, through system d that means the service so the service is not running all the time the the first challenge uh, is activating the the service on the host To make better uh, permission control inside the flat pack, uh, we are using uh, XDG Dbus proxy. So uh, there is there is a need to allow some permission to flat pack, but actually it is just to communicate uh, with the with the service through Dbus. There was one problem uh, we needed to solve. Uh, let me go back to the to this diagram. Um, when, when there is a user verification, so the user is prompted to, to give uh, a pin password or something, um, it should be provided to the authenticator. But the process is happening inside the flat pack. So we need to get the, the password to the authenticator in, from inside the, the flat pack. Uh, for this problem, we are using an unnamed pipe. Uh, so the service creates a file descriptors uh, from, from through they are communicating with. Okay, and here I would like to ask uh, Daiki to tell something about the demo. Yeah, so we have two demos. The first one is to use uh, Firefox uh, to put on authentication from the flat pack. So here is a demo video. So as you see, there is uh, only DRI devices and uh, some DBus services are allowed inside flat pack. So if you start this flat pack, and try to log in to GitLab. So the service asks to access the authenticator, and uh, it is properly propagated through the DBus. So I can now log in with this, this device. OK. OK, can we move on? The second example is that uh, emulating uh, passwordless authentication with um, TPM. So in this example, we don't use uh, authenticator device, but we emulate it. So the server, pro server program has uh, several options, and it has backend selectable. We have currently two backends, one is DB2 and uh, the other is TPM. So this is actually passwordless authentication demo. So actually the device is not inserted, but uh, it can be used without the device, but uh, with the TPM. So the login is same. I don't need to insert the device. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so a bit about the, the status. Uh, so we have a, a working Dbus proxy service uh, using uh, libfido2 and uh, tpm2. There's a client library which can communicate 
with the service through Dbus. And uh, there is already a, a Firefox integration uh, waiting for, for review. The future plan is uh, to make configuration files so we can actually define beforehand uh, default library we want to use. So leave it to our TPM um, and bring it to other distributions like, like Debian, Fedora, and uh, more client adaptations. 